Start up an auto loan for your new ride or refinance your current auto payments today. No waiting, hassles, or stop signs. You can even apply online. Danny Warfel here. Look how easy Florida Credit Union's made it to drive a new car. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. More info at www.flcu.org. All right, 20 minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Sadie Doyle is our next guest, and she is the founder of the blog Tiger Beatdown. She's a contributor to In These Times, The Guardian, Elle, The Atlantic, Slate, BuzzFeed. I, I love BuzzFeed. I think BuzzFeed is, is mostly for women, but I read it all the time. <laughs> I do. Uh, rookie, the, she's the recipient of the Women's Media Center Social Media Award, and uh, she's written a book called Trainwreck. The uh, subtitle of the book is The Women We Love to Hate, Mock, and Fear, and Why. And uh, good, let's say good morning to Sadie. Gosh, I have something to say about that already. Good morning, Sadie. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me. And, and where are you calling from? I'm calling in from Bo- Brooklyn, New York. From Brooklyn. I was nice. just I was just up there yep. uh, last week. My my son oh, and I, my son well, and I were visiting the city. We and we went over to Brooklyn just so we could walk over the bridge, the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great look. Well, I'm jealous of where you are. Oh well, don't be too jealous. Well, it's nice today. Yeah, you, <laughs> sh- you might weather. you might want to be jealous today. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Do you know what I, I wanted to say before we even get started? Is that I always hate when people mock people. It doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman, but maybe a little bit more when it's a woman because, po- and politics does this. Um, you could have mm. a you could have a lady. Let's say somebody everybody everybody loves Ellen DeGeneres. I guess right. She yes. she, she seems She's to be wonderful. Every, but if she ever ran for office, all of a sudden half the people would hate her. Yeah. Right. Um. A, 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 oh, gra- yeah. a great example is um. Let's see Hillary Clinton on the Democratic side. Um. Who's the lady from Alaska again? Uh, oh, Jill. No, no. Oh, the. Sarah Palin? Fair, oh, Sarah Palin, one. yes. Okay. I thought yes. you were talking about this I, I was trying to think of both both Republican and Sorry. Democrat. <laughs> but they both, I mean, I, I feel bad. I mean, why can't we just look at people for their policies and say, well, I don't like the policy, but the lady's okay or the man's okay. Why do we do this? It's, mm-hmm. just, it's just a mystery to me. Well, the book has a sort of concise history of how we publicly shame women. Um, I think gets at this a little, we're still very uncomfortable with a woman consciously putting herself forward into the public eye. Women have been sort of confined to the private sphere historically, and obviously when you're campaigning the way Hillary Clinton is right now, you have to constantly put yourself out there. You have to constantly let people look at you, ask them to listen to you. You have to take up space, and we still don't like it when women do that, and our discomfort can kind of register as personal dislike but i would argue that it's a more political reaction than that and it doesn't have to be political let me tell you something i work with a lady her name is robin she's sitting right here you're talking to her (laughs) and and you know when the two of us started doing what we were doing you know who got the most flack she did i didn't and we're both doing we're both doing the exact same thing (laughs) and i saw i saw it firsthand robin felt it but i saw it in robin yeah, so, I mean, on a small scale, com- I mean, it's small compared to the names we've made, we've mentioned, but I, I watched it happen here. I watched Robin get some nasty letters and stuff and phone yeah, calls. Yeah, made me cry. Yeah, made her cry. <laughs> what's, the with, what's the matter with people? <laughs> hey, why can't a lady do what Robin is doing or what you're doing, Sadie, for that matter? Yeah, it's pretty wretched, and the level of harassment that women get um, not just as celebrities, though I sort of examine a lot of celebrities in the book. There's a fair bit about Hillary Clinton in the book just because as a woman asking for power, she's such a good test case. But online, um, a woman expressing her opinion is a lot more vulnerable than a man. We yes. hear constantly about the yeah. levels of really vicious harassment yes. that people can get. I will, do, you, do you explore why? And Well, it says you do, but so why? I mean, why do we do that? Well, I think that women in particular are under so much pressure to be well-behaved. Women are encouraged to think of themselves, not in terms of what they want or what they have to say, but in terms of how many people like them. And um, by being viciously cruel to women who are quote-unquote unlikable, women who are badly behaved, women who are rebellious or opinionated, Mm. we are demonstrating the risks of of not caring about your likability. We are sort of punishing these women 
as a reminder to other women, they had better keep it together and they had better please everybody or oh, else. Wow. And who's doing it? Are men doing this or are other women doing this? I think men do it, you know, all the time. I think when women do it, we can get a little bit more intense toward each other because it's more intimate. Women have more to lose and therefore... You know, it's really easy when you feel like everybody's looking at you and when you're worried about your own likability yeah. or how together you are. Um, it's really easy to just point at somebody and go, hey, look over there. Do you know, Olivia Newton-John was on Jimmy Fallon the other night, and, mm -hmm. and she was just looking as beautiful as ever. And in the, in the you know, the comments underneath the videos on YouTube, somebody, somebody wrote, boy, she's really still looks pretty good, which is a nice compliment. And somebody else wrote, well, you would, too, if you had mm -hmm. her money. Yeah. You, you would, too, if you had her money. I thought, <laughs> oh, my, oh, my gosh. that's Why would you say that? I mean, why, I mean some, right. yeah. That's I, so clearly someone's own personal insecurity overflowing that they can't even like look at a compliment directed at someone else without thinking well how can i make sure that we all know she doesn't deserve it mm -hmm. you know Thank or you. how can i yes. make sure that people know yeah. yeah women are like that <laughs> you know you know your book train wreck is the same name as the uh, the amy schumer Schumer's. book uh, movie i mean and, yeah. and i love amy schumer and, <laughs> sh and she gets a lot of that crap too amy schumer picked gets a lot of that nasty stuff doesn't she Right, yeah, there are definitely a lot of men who really resent her. And, I mean, I think, again, as a woman taking up space, that's going to happen. She, yeah, I'm not overly familiar with her work. Cause the book had this title for a long time before <laughs> the movie came out, and I was just like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I, yeah, it's a shame to see how violent the opposition to her can get at times. Oh, you also go back into history. I mean, you go back to a person like uh, uh, Charlotte Bronte. I mean, it seems to me that she hasn't hurt anybody. Right. But at the time, you know, she had written this book that was, you know, in many ways, it was considered a dirty book. Um, the things that scandalized people back then aren't the same things that scandalize us now. One of the most scandalous parts of the book was the fact that Rochester is in the room with Jane discussing the fact that he's had affairs. A woman talking about sex with a man was was really terrifying to people, not to mention the fact that, you know, he's married the whole time. Yeah. But Charlotte Bronte really went to extraordinary lengths to guard her identity and the identity of her sisters, you know, uh, present day analog would be someone like Elena Ferrante mm -hmm. because her personal life was involved with this. She had, in fact, had a really intense, unrequited crush on a married man. Um, she had been told, and not just by, you know, ignorant people, but by published authors that as a woman, it was inappropriate for her to seek publication. Charlotte oh, Bronte wow. faced a lot of the same oh, wow. restrictions. It's just that, you know, yeah. You know, it we happened do, a long time ago, so it was a little more blatant. Do we do the same thing to Eve, Adam's wife? Yeah. The, the whole world is going to hell because of her. <laughs> 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 but then you have this different group of people, right. like uh, the British, for example. They had that series, uh, Upstairs, Downstairs, and then they just concluded this one series, uh, uh, Downton Abbey that everybody was enthralled with, but there were naughty things going on there between both sexes. But people found it entertaining. Right, absolutely. Well, you know, we um, our sexual mores change a little bit over time. We're more comfortable with having sex and entertainment now, whereas, you know, when Jane Eyre was published, that gave people the vapors. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> But, you know, we're not as comfortable with a woman who expresses desire on her own terms. Somebody who wants rather than somebody who is wanted and responds appropriately to it. And I think that's why, you know, we still get very scandalized by women who behave in an overtly sexual way in public, who are comfortable with being seen naked, for example, mm -hmm. or who have, you know, a lot of casual affairs instead of settling down. That's still something that we put a tremendous amount of energy into restricting and holding back and shaming. Uh, Sadie, do you have a, a website you can direct us to so that we can uh, look into this further? We've got like 40 seconds left. 
Books? Absolutely. Why don't you go to MHP Books, and you'll find a section for train wreck there. Okay, mhpbooks.com. Uh, Sadie Doyle, thank you for being on the air with us today, and uh, I think you're right on target. I mean, I know from Robin's experience that you ladies get a bum rap. And maybe I was wrong about Ellen. Maybe there's some people who don't like Ellen. <laughs> I like her. Based on the texting I was just looking at. All right, Sadie Doyle, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Thank you for having me. All right, we will be right back. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. Donald Trump threatening to sue the New York Times for publishing the accounts of two women who say he made unwanted advances toward them. A receptionist who says that Trump kissed her at Trump Tower in 2005, and a businesswoman who says Trump touched her on an airplane more than three decades ago. Fox's Peter Ducey, Trump tweeting out the Times story is a total fabrication. There are other allegations in the Palm Beach Post, Rolling Stone, and People. Reports say no motive has been ruled out in a plane crash in East Hartford, Connecticut, which left the student pilot dead, the instructor badly hurt. Now, the instructor has told investigators from his hospital bed that the plane was crashed intentionally. Uh, the Associated Press is reporting that a source familiar with this investigation says there was a fight on board the plane and 28-year-old student pilot Ferris Freytek took the plane down trying to kill himself. Fox's Rob Schmidt, Fox News. We report, you decide. If you've heard of WeatherTech floor liners, you probably know that for your vehicle's floor, nothing protects better. But what about protection for the rest of your car or truck? I'm David McNeil, founder of WeatherTech. Besides our floor liners, we design, engineer, and manufacture a wide range of automotive accessories right here in America. And just like our floor liners, everything is done to the highest standards possible. We understand what kind of investment owning a vehicle can be, so we do everything possible to help you protect it. We don't take shortcuts, and we never make concessions when it comes to quality. For everything from cargo liners to cleaning and detailing supplies to mud flaps and car covers, the one place you need to go is WeatherTech.com. So if you are familiar with our floor liners, just imagine how well the rest of our products will work for you. Learn more about our full line of automotive accessories at WeatherTech.com or call 1-800-CARMATS, WeatherTech.com. Proudly made in America. There's nothing like driving through your hometown. The familiar sights and sounds of your community. Is your hometown bank? Florida Credit Union can make that ride even smoother. Let us start up an auto loan for your new ride or refinance your current auto payments today. No waiting, hassles, or stop signs. You can even apply online. Danny Warfel here. Look how easy Florida Credit Union's made it to drive a new car. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. More info at www.flcu.org. Ocala presents the 50th annual Ocala Arts Festival, and this year's event hosts 170 artists from around the country. Fine Arts for Ocala has brought art to our community with the Ocala Arts Festival for 50 years, and this year is sure to please. The festival includes free admission, free parking, free children's art projects, and free live entertainment. But it's only one weekend, so make plans now to attend the Fine Arts for Ocala's 50th anniversary, October 22nd and 23rd. For more info, visit fafo.org. Here are today's headlines from the source. WOCA Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump made a stop in Ocala yesterday. A crowd of nearly 10,000 was in attendance at the Southeastern Livestock Pavilion to greet the candidate. Almost immediately, he went on the attack against his Democratic opponent, Hillary Clinton. Trump said, quote, we are going to cut taxes big league. Crooked Hillary is going to raise taxes, unquote. A line of spectators to see Trump started forming before 6 a.m. for his appearance at noon. After the stop in Ocala, Trump spoke to a large crowd of supporters at Lakeland Linder Regional Airport around 4 p.m. A federal judge agreed yesterday to extend voting registration in Florida until October 18th because of the impact of Hurricane Matthew. Judge Mark E. Walker of the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Florida granted a preliminary injunction to the Florida Democratic Party and other groups who had argued that voter registration needed to be moved because of the effects of the storm, which raked along the eastern coastline for several days. The judge noted that he had heard testimony from the Leon County Supervisor of Elections, who said 
said the magnitude of the storm imposed tremendous strain on elections offices. He also noted that the storm delayed naturalization ceremonies and that new citizens would not have the opportunity to vote in the election absent of his order. A spokesperson for the Florida Secretary of State's office said they have already sent the order to the supervisors of elections. A Golden Corral employee has been hospitalized after she was doused with fluid and then set on fire while working inside the Jacksonville restaurant. Jacksonville Sheriff's deputies told media outlets that a man who was an acquaintance of the woman entered the restaurant early yesterday evening and doused the employee with a flammable liquid. He then set her on fire. The unidentified woman was airlifted to a hospital in Gainesville. There was no word of her immediate condition. Jacksonville Sheriff's Office spokesman Sergeant Jay Farhart says the the suspect was taken into custody and is being charged with attempted murder. His identity has not been released. The incident was captured on surveillance video. The business was packed when the attack occurred. Golden Corral officials say the suspect did not work at the restaurant. FEMA personnel were on the ground in Nassau, Duval, St. John's, and Flagler counties yesterday to pinpoint damage caused by Hurricane Matthew. Teams will be deployed to additional counties as requested by the state. According to FEMA, these individuals will help identify areas of damage where preliminary damage assessment teams will be needed. Those teams comprised of representatives from local emergency management, the state of Florida, U.S. Small Business Administration, and FEMA will then be assigned to areas identified by the state to further document the extent of damage caused by the hurricane to those areas. The teams visit and inspect damaged areas and document their findings. However, they do not visit every home or business. The teams look at concentrations of damage, number of primary residents affected, damage to public infrastructure, and the amount of insurance coverage, and then provide this information to the state. Damage assessment results from each county will be a factor used to determine the county county's eligibility for individual assistance. If a county is declared eligible for further assistance, individuals and households in the declared counties may apply for that assistance. Florida residents and businesses don't have to wait to find out if the federal assistance is available to start their cleanup. Keep repair receipts and document your damages whenever possible. Notify your insurance agent of any damages sustained to your property and you can also contact your local emergency management agency to report damage. And those are the headlines from the source WOCA 96.3 FM and 1370 AM. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Thursday, intervals of clouds and sun, there will be a shower or two around. Anytime at the coasts, only in the afternoon over the interior, the high 82 to 86. Clear to partly cloudy Thursday night. There may be a shower in spots right at the coast. The overnight low 62 at inland 73 along the coast. Clouds and some sunshine for Friday. There can be a shower along the coast. The high 83 to 87. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Next Generation MD is the future of healthcare now. Listen in the first and third Thursday at 10 a.m. to learn how the future in PRP treatments are here in our area. Find out the many ways that Dr. Juan Jordan, MD, Charles Brooks, NP, and case manager Mark Shaw have brought the family medicine practice to a new level. Hear from the very people that benefit from the fine work they have done in this field. Next Generation MD, every first and third Thursday at 10 a.m. here on WOCA 96.3 FM, 1370 a.m., The Source. Today in Florida Ag News, I'm a Southeast Ag Network. Well, USDA's National Agriculture Statistics Service released their October crop reports Wednesday, and Bianca Pernado with NAS in Washington, D.C. says cotton production here in the U.S. this year will be down slightly from earlier forecast. All cotton production is forecast at 16,480,000 pound bales, down less than 1% from last month, but up 24% from last year. Yield is expected to average 797 pounds per harvested acre, up 31 pounds from last year. Cotton production in Georgia is forecast at 2.4 million bales, unchanged from last month, but up 6% from last year. In Alabama, production is forecast at 700,000 bales, up 1% from September and up 26% from last year. Florida production is expected to total 180,000 bales, unchanged from last month, but up 18% from 2015. This is Bianca Pernada with the USDA National Agriculture Statistics Service. Mm, Produce farmers, it's me, Billy the Bad Mite. 
hanging out in your berry patch with millions of my fellow pesty friends sucking and chewing up your crop. Mm, a delicious berry nom nom nom. Oh, oh, I can't eat another bite. Mm, I don't feel so good. Oh, I'm sick. At 3.27 p.m., Billy the Bad Mite and millions of fellow chewing and sucking pest had their last meal thanks to Venerate XE, the worker-friendly, sustainable, and highly effective liquid bioinsecticide. With multiple modes of action, Venerate XE stops adult and juvenile mites from feeding quickly and controls a broad range of adult insects as well. Help resistance management. Make Venerate XE a key component in your IPM program. It's easy to use with a zero-day pre-harvest interval and MRL tolerance exception. Plus, it's non-toxic to your beneficial insects. Goodbye, pest. Hello, Venerate XE. Get yours today. Visit GoodbyePests.com. That's GoodbyePests.com. Or call your local supplier. Randall Wiseman, Southeast, Agnet. Highland Memorial Park is a beautiful place, not a sad place. You know you need to put your house in order, and Highland is the place to take care of your end-of-life issues. You have thought about it, but keep putting it off. That is just our nature. We want to protect our family, but life gets in the way. Pre-planning makes sense, but at some point, it will be too late to plan ahead. Don't put this off any longer. Call Highland Memorial Park. Make the best decisions and get it done. Call 352-369-1020. We will be there when you need us, but we would like to help you now. Palm Garden wants to get to the heart of the matter. If you've been in the hospital as a cardiac patient, maybe you have a pacemaker or congestive heart failure or an arrhythmia, or perhaps you're a heart bypass patient, then consider Palm Garden as your rehab choice. With proven outcomes, second to none, Palm Garden fixes broken hearts. Call today at 854-6262. That's 854-6262. The entire world watched. They watched each step down the rungs of that small ladder, one after another, and waited with great anticipation for that last step. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. At that moment, humanity saw the impossible become the possible. And today, the sky is not the limit. Achievement. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala!